All right, today I want to talk about serial compression and how to tame a vocal using two compressors in series or the fast and slow method of compressing. And before we start, I want to make sure that you absolutely stop worrying about how much gain reduction you're doing and just follow your ears and make sure that it sounds good because compression isn't about looking at how much gain reduction is happening. It's about how you can shape your sounds. If you don't know me yet, my name is Björk Finn Benedictsson and I am the founder of Audio Issues and author of Step by Step Mixing, how to create great mixes using only five plugins. Today I'm going to show you the fast and slow method of compressing using an 1176 and an LA-2A in series so that you can catch the peaks and then just squeeze the vocals so that it sounds great and fits there and is just steady without feeling over compressed. All right, let's check it out. All right, so what I got here is the song Mess by Katie Haverly. It was an alternative version we did in my studio a few years back, but it's uh, a beautiful song, definitely something to, to take a listen to and check her out on Bandcamp. But let's look at the waveform of the vocal here. So as you can see, there are some heavy dynamic changes here. Uh, this particular part is way louder than a lot of the other stuff, and there's a bunch of peaks here. So what we want to do is we want to put two compressors on it and have an 1176, which is an FET compressor, which is really, really fast. And we want to have a super fast attack and a super fast release. And it just like clamps down on those peaks, but doesn't, uh, doesn't stay, <laughs> stay around too long. And then that feeds into the LA-2A, which is a slower leveling compressor slash limiter. And that's just massaging that vocal so that it's steady and has sort of a constant gain reduction of a few dB. And you might see how this needle will jump all the way to minus 10. And that's just the peaks. Uh, that's just what, the, what I'm doing when I'm trying to catch the peaks. So let's take a listen to it and you'll see I put it at a 20 to 1 ratio, which is pretty high, but for demonstration purposes, it, it works pretty well because you'll see it really move. And then this is just sort of uh, constant in place. But watch the meters while you watch the particular waveforms there so you can sort of see the relationship between the two of them. But for most of us, it will be easy to buy we're trapped in the labyrinth of our minds Scenes with dull colors Strange figures Blurring lines But in the meantime While we So as you can see, depending on the peaks that are happening, this one sort of shoots back and forth while this one sort of slowly, lazily hits here. And let's see what happens when we deactivate one of them and just listen to I reduced the gain a little bit because here it was, I felt like it was clamping down just a little bit too much, but let's hear it just with the 1176. But for most of us, it will be easy. We're trapped in the labyrinth of our minds Scenes with dull colors Strange figures Blurring light So I find that it isn't compressing a lot, obviously, as you can see And it seems like the vocal is just sort of uh, standing on top of the rest of the mix Obviously, you can move the level down and fit it in a bit better but and but that's what I use the LA-2A for, just to squeeze everything so that it sits better. However, if I didn't have this LA-2A and I wanted to just to compress uh, more, you may run into issues with things sounding over compressed. So let's just increase the input and increase the compression in general so that the threshold goes down to it compressing way more than 
than before, and then let's check how the sonic difference of that. But for most of us, it will be easy to find what trapped in the labyrinth of our minds. Scenes with dull colors, strange figures. So that just, it sounds off to me. It's it just, there's too much. Uh, aggressiveness going on for a vocal that's supposed to be a lot smoother and that's where the LA-2A comes in it smooths things out quite a bit let's put just the LA-2A on and see how that feels but for most of us it will be easy to buy what chat in the labyrinth of our minds scenes with dull colors Strange figures blurring lines, but in the meantime, while we can So I feel like because we lack that initial peak limiting in a way we don't get that full body of the vocal to come through. So when you add and kind of s squeeze the tops off and then let the LA-2A sort of uh, glue everything together, it just comes off as being a more a smoother vocal sound. It's shaped better. It's overall just a, a, a better treatment than if you were to do just one compressor. So. Regardless of whether you're uh, what what you're compressing, it's really just always about how things sound. But at the same time, you should not be scared of of the meters jumping out, uh, jumping all around the place. So let's put that back in. But for most of us, it will be easy to find what chat in the labyrinth of our minds Scenes with dull colors Strange figures Blurring lines But in the meantime While we... Alright, so there you have it the fast and slow vocal compression technique, just a serial compressor. Just to recap, we use a really fast compressor like a 1176 or an FET compressor with a fast attack and a fast release to just chop off some of those peaks, just to limit those peaks and sort of reduce the dynamic range of the vocal without uh, being without using audible compression. That's why the attack and release times are so fast because you don't want to necessarily hear it you just want the compressor to take it down and then you use a slow compressor like an opto or an la2a in this case to massage the vocal and squeeze it together and sort of make it fit and shape it so that it just sort of falls into the mix and fits together with the rest of the instruments all right there you have it, hope that was useful. Um, if you want more tips from me and you're struggling to get your mix to sound good on every speaker system, get my Mix Finisher cheat sheet at mixfinisher.com and that sort of shows you my seven step process to making your mixes sound great wherever you play them. All right, I'm Bjorkman Benedictson from Audio Issues. Thanks for watching. <laughs>